All right, and we're starting right on time, 5 p.m. And we're back. Um, I'm Junchan, and today we're again working on implementing the Chronofold data structure in PureScript. And last time we did uh, quite a few nice things, like we actually, which we actually pushed as well to uh, to GitHub, and. Um, where we were um, able to interpret the log in the kind of basic case. And so now what's really uh, on our table right now is to implement the causal tree merge algorithm, which is kind of where this whole thing becomes a CRDT uh, for real. So I'm really looking forward to that. And so let me check my checklist. I didn't restart my router. I'm sure this will bite me. Uh, in the posterior but we shall see and i am unmuted and i do i have chatty on i do have chatty on and um and i think the rest is um is up and running so ah yeah something to add in my in my list um create a new log file And so we're going to do that now by duplicating this guy for today. And removing what we've done. And the links. And let's get into the code. So we also did quite a bit of. Um, development tooling and testing and uh, we have a, a pre-push hook um, it's actually a pre-commit hook so well, it just happened to work without with the default i guess and um, that allows us to do something like a npm test when we commit an empty test is actually running the test in node first and then running the test in the browser and using the Karma uh, runner is able to run this Mocha test by spinning up a Firefox instance, checking that the tests uh, were uh, successful and then returning uh, to the command line with a proper exit code. So that's all nice. Uh, one of the next steps could be to set up a uh, CI on the GitHub repo, GitHub workflows, or Travis CI, or whatever is uh, the kids use these days. And um, yeah, let me try and grab the um, the Firefox window if I can. It usually displays on my other screen. And yeah, no, I can't. <laughs> it's too fast. But uh, success, so we're happy. Our tests are passing, and our tests include um this uh projection of being able to um to insert a a backspace um just before the p or just by, sorry just after after the p of pinsk and then insert an m after that uh, which then transform our pinsk into minsk which is exactly this example right here Okay, so now we need to implement the causal tree merge algorithm. And so that will include the, so maybe we should start writing the text test for that. And it will include a another replica gamma, which will be inserting um, insk, four backspaces and in insk at the same time as beta um, is implementing, oh, that's here. Um, yeah, it will implement, it will um, do four backspaces after alpha 6 at the same time as beta 7 is actually uh, doing one backspace after alpha 6. So, so gamma and beta are two replicas that uh, don't know about each other. And since they depend on the same um, alpha 2 causal parent or causal reference, um, we have uh, this case of the... Um, preemptive CT sibling at the same location. And so we need to do the CT things. So let's write first of all a test that does 
uh, that's meant to do that. And so this way we're actually doing test-driven development, which is nice. And um, so, um, so what are we going to test? We're going to test that Alpha 6 Beta, well, Beta is going to do the same thing we're doing over there. And then we're going to have a gamma that uh, a gamma log that does this, that that is does its thing. And then we need to express um, that um, that beta and gamma are in touch with each other, re receive each other's ops. And after they receive each other's ops, we need to then project both. And uh, by the way, re receiving each other's ops is going to mean that actually their local log is going to be ordered differently. But they should project to the same final result. So that is in a nutshell where we want. So in this test, we are adding a gamma replica, which will be number three here. Since we've done um, the explainer in the previous one, we don't need to do it here. And maybe we need uh, a utility function now for this. Um, uh, I, I had one. Um, which was a pen string, I think, that I put into buffer. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure it works anymore, but uh, how about we just try it? So we'd start with the alpha log root, and then we would uh, append a string in alpha log root of pensk. And we'll call this alpha log pensk consistency. And then we can run the uh, this checks um, replication with conflict. We can save that, and then we should be able to run. Um, well, we can run Spago test minus watch if we want it to be a little bit explicit like we did here we could do this and this way we can do npm run oops yeah no that's it npm run test node watch which is fast as a, whereas the browser does some bundling and um, there's probably a way to make the bundling better than it is right now but it seems like it's not as incremental and as hot reloading as we would want it to be. Okay, um, so at least this seems to be all right, except that now we don't have the individual ops for, um, yes, yes, yes. We don't have the individual ops for beta. So we actually need something a little bit smarter than uh, a pen string. We need something that's going to basically return an array of ops, and then we need something that can append ops instead of just an op. And then we'll want also something that inserts ops or whatever we called it. We called it uh, right. We we maybe yeah indeed build snock. Oh, actually we say we could say uh, build snock. String ops would take a string. Build snock string ops, not op. We take a string, uh, I mean, a log a string, and we return an array of op. And then we could also do a build causal op, which will insert things um, at a timestamp this time. Yeah, that, that works for me. Um, array of ops, so we have returned the empty array for now. And uh, we'll take uh, a log and a string. And then the causal op, build causal string op, will take in addition a timestamp. 
which says after which point in the log do we uh, insert our things. And therefore we have also a T here. And, and then we'll want this append ops and and we already have it, which will take an array of op. And it's just for the up and up and up. Yeah, I think that makes sense, actually. And I guess uh, build snog string up will basically be a folder of build snog up. So, um, right, except I need to, well, I need to do something similar that I did with the append string. So, let's get the code here so we can see what we've done because we convert right we convert the string to a code point array and we want to do that and uh, well i mean really that's this is nothing else it's the same thing so it's just that it's a different uh, we don't need a pen string anymore i don't think we can keep that um, here. And, uh, oh, oh, right. No, except that we don't append the op. Yeah, we don't append the op. We want to return, uh, we want to return it. And so the accumulator, ah, right. The accumulator is not just the log. Or right, right. Now we we're folding over chars, and but the accumulator is actually it's actually not the log at all. It's just the empty array, and we um, oh, but we do need to pass um, we do need to pass a tuple of. Um, so maybe we do this, um, this is the, these are the ops, and we also need to pass the log, which will be L at the first iteration. And then here we get ops and log, and we append, and we return ops which will be built snock up of log and c together with log which will just be what which will be Maybe we should build a function. No real reason why this shouldn't be a let, but uh, ops log and c. No, c is outside. Oopsie. <laughs> and uh, equals blah, and then we we'll fold. over go and uh, then we return log which needs to have its um, which needs to append stuff and maybe we can make it so that with a let statement in there let's see We can make this a bit nicer by saying it's uh, ops is uh, hmm. we're gonna have some shadowing if we do this like this so ops prime 
Things equal to ops appended with the new op. And then there's the question of when do we apply all of these things to the log? Do we apply them as we go or do we apply them at the end? We do have a choice here. Uh, so that's not a pend up, that's just ops prime. And log is a pend up of log and ops prime. To import this. I wish this was faster. And array dot folder. And then we need to in fact return this dot ops. Okay, we need to give this a type. Um, you're not happy with that? Cannot match array. Oh, I'm missing a... What am I missing? dot ops returning array op ops and i'm appending and builds knock up gives me a knock oh right okay so no i need to knock it really i need to knock ops and builds knock up something like that right and then your append op is taking what oh it should be append op Unless I, yeah, unless I do, yeah, in fact, what I wanted to do was up equals this and then do snark ops with up and append log of up. Which seems like this type checks cool and then um and then we'll need the causal string up but uh in a second uh right now we should be able to do alpha log pinsk and instead of append string we should be able to say append ops to alpha log roots off builds knock string ops of alpha dog root again into Pinsk. And so maybe we should um, say that this is alpha to stay in keeping with our notation from before. This is alpha up Pinsk. And it's equal to this. And then we can just append alpha up Pinsk here if we use append ops. And then beta log root will be append ops of empty log beta of alpha log pinsk. Oh, except. No, that's fine. Is it fine? It just doesn't have the root op in it. So. I need to snark the, not the log root, the, um, the, the empty, the, em the root, root alpha, root alpha being the root up and so in which case maybe I can get rid of alpha log root 
and just append all of these people to alpha empty log alpha. It's a cleaner PI, I believe. And then um, and then we are able to say that beta log pinsk is just append ops onto empty log beta of alpha uh, it's, it's not op it's ops because we have many now it's an array and that's what we append and that includes the root um, op and this should actually already type check and even pass and if we have the right uh, snark in and this is also not imported yet and we can import it and we don't have an alpha log root anymore because it should be a empty log alpha Definitely not the prettiest uh, notation. I guess I could use uh, concat. Maybe it would be better. I'm not sure. Or, or the map end instance of uh, arrays. The monoid instance. I'm not sure. Right, except that we need the timestamp for p. Right, right, right. Yeah, how are we going to... Oh, that's an interesting question right there. Since we haven't applied... Oh, actually, we can get it by taking the second... Or maybe the first... Uh, yeah, the first in our in our world, the first of um, of of oh, well, no, we we only need to put this in an array. It's already an array, except that now we have to deal with the empty case, and so so we could uh, put ourselves into the maybe Ronad again to deal with this. Um, I wish I had an unsafe version of the index, to be honest, especially for a test like this, where actually I have a, a string constant. So let's take a look again. I think I tried to find it before, but uh, no, unsafe index, that's it. That's, uh, that's what I need. And except it's going to, going to add a partial constraint. to my monad and uh, maybe that's fine I, it's to my value oh I guess I could just use unsafe partial and that would just evaluate uh, the partial type class right away. So let's try this. Unsafe partial of unsafe index of alpha of pins at one. 
and that's a whole bunch of stuff to import. This is not as fast as I would like it to be also. However, this is fast. And build succeeded. Oh, and however, index out of bounds next. That's cool. So, index out of bound and next is thrown here. And so if we if we also add here uh, let's see up and even log to be honest. I'll use log in here, right? I mean, it, might, it will could shadow. I don't think we use console in here though, so we're not gonna come uh, shadow anything. I don't think. And uh, up, right? Yeah. Nor does it give us. Oh yeah, we need to show things. And okay, so we have a log that is called alpha zero with all of these empty things, and we're trying to append alpha one to it which links to alpha zero, but there's no alpha zero in there. So this is all good. And I guess the question is, are we doing this in the wrong order somehow then? Maybe we need, oh yeah, yeah, we need to cons. We need to cons root alpha unto unto the build snark. I think, uh, right, it's going to be Aricons This guy And still the problem Let's make sure we're testing the right thing.
Okay. So we were testing the right thing, sort of. Let's um, let's go step by step. Maybe our build snog string ops is already a problem. Yeah, it is. Uh huh, because we start with empty log alpha instead of the. So we still need a, an alpha root in the same way that we had um, here. Okay, that's fine, I don't mind. Maybe we'll improve this uh, later. So we, and we append the up to it. Okay, no, I, I say I don't mind, but I actually do mind a bit because if we want to append this to beta afterwards, then it is better to just have a, an array of ops. So can we just... Um, Can we just build this knock up build whoopsie yeah yeah that's the that's my issue i think um build snock up into empty log alpha with root alpha and that's what that's the alpha up root i believe and then we can const the alpha up root to the build snock string let's try this you're not happy with all oh, right build snow cop let's check it again oh we need a code point right well isn't root just code point zero and or, or does it have something else in it root I mean, root alpha is an op. I shouldn't need to build this knock up from it. So there's something I'm... Okay, so let's think of it like this, that this is root alpha. Compiles. And ejects. It's not string ops. Returns an array of ops. But I'm running it on the empty log. Fine, so the initialization of the log is just a little bit different. Okay, okay. I'm not completely against that. But then it's good to have the op as such. And then we say that we do this on top of alpha log root. And that's fine. Okay. And so alpha log pinsk will finally append the things onto alpha log root. And I think I'm duplicating some work here. Um, 
So let's ignore it for now. And then beta log pins will append the ops into beta log root. Which will be appending alpha op root into empty log beta. And then we'll append all the alpha log pins ops into it. Okay. And then we'll check that, uh, that let's see, lift effect of log of um, project beta log Pinsk. We'll check that that's Pinsk. Okay. Okay. And now we want to do our backspace, and to do that, we need to be able to index into um, into our beta log pins structure, actually into our alpha of pins array. So um, let's see we find the insertion point in the ops array. Actually, really the, the real way is to apply the ndx env on the timestamp. No, right. To, to find the timestamp by doing ndx of our insertion point in local coordinates. So let's do that. Um, so beta insertion index is equal to, or it's actually beta, in, yeah, the beta insertion index, we say that it's basically one, and so we want to um, why not? We say that's that's the local index as opposed to zero, right? So it would be index two, in fact, maybe I think yeah, I think that's right. Index two is the local index. And then we want to convert that. And how do we do that? We take, we don't have a function for this, but maybe we should have one. It would be something like, uh, we take a log and it would, yeah, it maps index env to an array of timestamp. So we could have an index index env function I guess that would be somewhere here maybe and the x env that would take a log that would take an index and we return a timestamp and it would in the log it would Basically, only take uh, the fourth. Oh no! Well, hold on. Next if that's wrong. This is some old stuff. I need to fix that. Right there we go. So one, two, three, four, fifth. And that's in the inks inv. Oh, and I guess we need a maybe timestamp. Yeah. Okay. And this would be just basically, um, oh yeah, it would take the index of i 
and you would do ndx env at i minus one. You're not happy with that because you're missing a empty constructor, I believe. No. I expected. No, yeah, no, that's right. And then what? I'm not covering all things because this could be infinity. That's wrong then. I shouldn't. Oh, I, I think I've uh, indexed my stuff. So next is an array of index, but NDX shouldn't be a map of index because we can't map to infinity. Infinity is only for the weave length list. Link. Hmm. Yeah. So then we just say this is int and and we're done. Yep. And then we follow the refactoring superpower because now this is going to be int and this is going to be i. And we can be in zero indexing world. I think that's fine. And then we follow the error. And now when we're inserting into NDX, we don't need to insert. Cur plus plus one, we can insert just cur, I believe. And we don't need to pass a match here. So NDX swap. This would actually be a maybe. Integer, so we can use this right here and remove this. And compiled. Aha, uh -huh. it doesn't pass test because we still have some stuff going on here. Well, specifically, well, no, I don't know. Let's take a look. A specified port. Yeah, no, that's not the problem. Okay, okay. What? Map timestamp int test dot main eighty three. Okay, I'm not in test dot main eighty three. Oh, okay. Mm hmm yeah. And so now this is 0 and 1, I believe. Mm hmm And 
but simple verification now fails. Probably because we made a mistake in the swapping. And maybe we're not minus one anymore. Maybe we just uh, index. Ha ha ha. Oh yeah. Refactoring superpowers, indeed. And so now we can um, we can do what we have our conflict. We have an insertion index, which we now can call one. So we really don't need to do that one is the local index fine and we just need to use ndx invert onto beta log pinsk for one and then i want to see that timestamp That's the one. Just alpha one. Okay, so maybe two then. Um, okay, let, let, let's think about this for a second. NDX env. We're zero indexed array, so zero one should give me alpha two. Uh, maybe I left a minus one in the NDX env implementation. I did. Doesn't need a minus one anymore. Just alpha two, that's where we wanted. And so now we can do what? We can and safely extract the maybe version because we know it's there. How do we do that? Um, PR script, uh, maybe. I'm safe. From just. Hey, Juan, how's it going? Unsafe partial. From just, from just comes from data maybe. All right, now it's already dark here. Data maybe that's the one. And we get alpha two. Good. And so we have our insertion point, and so we can now do what we can. Well, we need this um, variant of um, of our new uh, build, uh, yeah, uh, build string ops, but that's a build causal string ops, and that takes a timestamp, yeah. And uh, then what is it going to do? It's going to 
do pretty much the same thing, but with build causal up, I suppose. Yes, yes, absolutely. I will, I will have some. What are you having? Are you a coffee person? All right, all right. That sounds good. So is this just a matter of... Replacing build snog up there with uh, build causal up and then just 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 uh, do it and that's it. I think probably. Uh, oh, except oh right, except that what we really mean is that the first character is here. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of need to kind of go do one one loop, one go around with the with the uh, built causal up, and then the rest with our normal built knock up, I believe. I think so. So what's that going to look like? Oh well, we could. Uh... We could uh, put the causal op for L in here, and then append that up. Okay, so we need to actually let this is the causal op and we can call it uh, we can have it whoopsie do it like this and we put the op in the array and then we say that uh, our uh, startup log is the log with append l and our causal op And then we do our rest, but we don't do it with um, causal op here. We just do it with a uh, snock op, and that means without the T. <clears throat> yeah, unknown value C. Mm-hmm, right. We actually need to destructure now. Um, oh yeah, we can use a init and last, I think, from the, where is it, tail or uh, split, I think, split. Split. Let's put then uh, insert at update at modify at alter at reverse blah. I think I was thinking of the string. Okay, that was ants knock. Uh, we don't no, we want uncons. Yep. 
Ten cards. And uh, this would be the tail. And uh, CH will be our head. And we'll put CH here. And this is the data array and counts. Except we want it. We have a maybe. Mm -hmm. So So what happens if we have a nothing in there? Do we return an empty array? Counts as the empty list. There's nothing. So we have an empty string. So we can return an empty array, that's fine. So we can actually use a A maybe a maybe monad trick. So let's try. So if we return empty here, then we do um, maybe empty array identity of this. Then I suppose uh, then I suppose how do we do our causal up thing at the beginning? I guess we just say it's just this. And then we return just this as well. And we're taking maybe from maybe package. Yep, that one. And identity from Prelude, if you were in mind. Uh huh. And it compiles. And tests pass, but, well, we don't know whether build causal string ops is going to do what we want it to do. And what we wanted to do is um, something like beta ops backspace p or m equals build causal string up of beta log pinsk at the beta insertion timestamp off and then we need to sort of build a string with backspace first and m after which i suppose we can do just maybe by doing b 
by using the monoid instance on string. Can we do that? I mean, backspace is a code point or a... Uh, backspace, I think, is a code point. That's the issue. Yeah. So we can just say uh, singleton. Yeah, we can do the singleton trick. So we can do uh, singleton. What was the singleton trick? Good point. Map singleton to. Oh, okay, right. So if we can do singleton f map to backspace and this, and I don't know about precedence here. I'll do. Uh, this and and then this will be appended with M. How is that? Okay, we need to import for the causal string ops. Mm -hmm. And we need to import fmap. Well, I'd prefer to import it from preview if you don't mind. And then very backspace. That's also fine. You can grab it from here. Really, this should be um, an unsafe uh, partial thingy. So let's transform it to unsafe partial from just. And I have it here too. Okay, what's the problem? You don't want to map bend. Okay. There's no modern instance on strings. Is that what you're telling me? script monoid instance string singleton backspace should be a string right actually why am i f mapping it I didn't need to map map to f map it. I just needed to singleton. Oh yeah. And then, then we can check that our um, that we can have a beta log Minsk by. Appending the ops to beta.pinsk of beta ops backspace m. And then we should be able to check that beta.minsk should equal minsk. And we can remove this. Oopsie. Mm 
Yay. Very good. So we've um, we've now have um, well, actually, we have tests with for uh, checks um, built knock string ops and uh, build causal string ops. So let me copy that. And we don't need gamma, and that's not such an example. And we don't need to have this we keep. And that's what we're doing, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we do the next step in a little dense here, which is that we do um, well. Really, what we do is pretty much what we did with beta, but with gamma, and we can also get rid of this craft. And uh, alpha beta log root. So it starts with beta log root. And this is uh, gamma log root. Built on gamma. Also receiving its initial ops from alpha. I mean, it's. Yeah, we've separated the root one, so that's fine. And this is from gamma.root. All of this will be in a... There'll be a state monad interface, of course. I should, in fact, an update monad interface, too. But, uh, yeah. And then, uh, well, gamma insertion timestamp is going to be in the gamma log. This doesn't really matter. It's the same result, but still and then backspace will definitely use backspace again but this time it will be gamma ops how are we going to call them um maybe for backspace insk <laughs> how about backspace for insk okay and then we build the causal string ops, but on top of the gamma log pinsk at the gamma insertion point or timestamp. And this time we do four times this, and I guess that that's the what replicate monoid or something. This is that maybe monoid power. Mm -hmm. Power for blah and insk. And then we're going to check that gamma log minsk is equal to minsk. Ah, right, yes. I forgot something, which is to say that gamma log minsk is gamma log pinsk together with gamma ops blah. Is that right? It's not right. Uh, because we've left a number of things hanging somewhere. Oh, we defined backspace twice, yeah. It's not good. Yeah, there we go. Unknown value power, that's fine. We can find that. In 
Ja, jetzt haben wir noch einen. Mm. Oh, I must have reversed it. Yeah, take the M first. Okay. And we build. Mm. Oh, but of course. So this is quite correct. Oh, is it correct? No, we, we've done. We've gone negative. <laughs> Very cool. Because the insertion stamp is not right. The insertion insertion timestamp. We we it's a different one. We're actually deleting from. Alpha six, so we're not inserting a causal op. We're actually inserting a snock op. Uh, and uh, so what it did is it went here, and then it did four deletes and inserted insk, and then it has insk written afterwards, which actually is correct. It didn't go too far left. I mean. It, It was just in kind of insertion mode, which is kind of what we would expect. So that's great. That's nice. I like this. And uh, but uh, what we what we're saying is that we don't need that gamma, and we just need to build a snock string up without the timestamp, and do the same. That's right. It's not, it's not Minsk yet. It's Pinsk. Yes, Pinsk. Yes. Lowercase. Okay, now what's why you so slow now? There we go. Very good. Okay, so now we have um, we are at this point, sort of, and we want to now get gamma's log gamma's logs appended to beta and beta's log appended to gamma and that's when start things starts being a little fun right so how do we do this um well it's not going to work but i want to test it i want to have a failing test so we are um we're just basically appending the gamma ops to beta the gamma ops to beta but ha 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 the trick is that um there's an implicit dependency of gamma 7 on alpha 6 that we well actually actually we should have it in gamma ops let's uh let's uh, show this i think we should have it gamma ops um backspace should start with an op that uh, has a just alpha 6 dependency well it's called it's called just gamma 6 there but i think that's just because of my show instance my show instance uh, shows gamma things but that really should be alpha so let's check uh, let's check the show instance so it's actually the show instance for up isn't it which is generic so maybe it's the show instance for timestamp Maybe I'm not inserting the up with the correct replica. 
In fact, I don't remember using R prime underneath. So when do we use R? We don't. We use... Oh no, we, we should use T in places. Don't we insert T somewhere? Yeah, we insert T in NDXM and in RAF. Oh, maybe it's in the build-up. Yeah, it is. I'm not saying who, I'm, who I am here. I'm not saying what my replica is. And so when I build up the, when I build up the op, I'm just taking the replica from the log I'm appending to. Which can be Huh. Okay, let's double check this. Because the log what's the what's that say gamma log spinsk? Right, yes, yeah, so that will have gamma in it as the, the original timestamp. Despite if I'm adding operations from a remote replica, and so that's wrong. I need to add replica here. Huh, that's cool. And so clearly I need to do the same thing here. Build an up. For let's uh, think a second here. Um, build an art at replica. So this way, oh no, but look, this is, this is correct, at least. Here it's correct. Here, even though we're in the log gamma, yeah, that's because we just, um, We built the ops on the on replica alpha. But we could be appending a replica that doesn't come from the same log, yeah. So yeah, yeah, there's no there's no two way about it. Um it will be rep prime. And the op actually has rep prime in here and uh, rep prime in here. And same thing here. Rep prime here. And then, well, this timestamp should actually. Oh, oh! Actually, we can we can bypass having a timestamp. Oh, we can bypass having a replica here. Because we can find it in the T.
red prime. I prime. Then we need to make sure that our op is occurring at red prime. And it will map to just T, that's okay. And so that means that our snog op will need to take a replica as well. And we'll need to pass this to build snog op. And build causal blah will need to unpack its R and well we won't use the I but and then it will build this knockoff with the R and then we need to change our test code I mean let's double check yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think it's only a warning here. Let's get rid of our warnings. Uh huh. Yeah, a pen string, but uh, are we even using a pen string now? Not even sure we are. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can deal with that later. And then and then what's up here? Yeah, no, that's not a problem. using it but <laughs> but I think we should uh, deprecate that or oh, let's gonna uncomment it or comment it rather and then we should have a bunch of built knock up problems and so that's just because we need to say that we are appending all this on replica alpha. And then... Oh, well, yeah, okay. In this case, even... Oh no, I pinned up doesn't take the thing, but Bill Snock up is going to take it here. And here, here, and here. And beta will well beta appends the alpha ops, so that's all good until here, where before the timestamp. Oh well. I think that's the wrong signature. I think we now have a beta here. And then we pend it, and then we have a beta here, and then we pend it. Is that correct? 
Oh no, we don't. Not with causal. Yeah, causal can figure it out with the timestamp only. But the uh, snark then afterwards need the better. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. No, so and then we move on to here, and then here we do need the replica after the log. So this is alpha. And then beta just gets the alpha ops and then causal string shouldn't need the thing. And so we should be good. Until here, or we say alpha again, and then causal string ops doesn't need it, but snock string does. And so therefore here we have gamma. And now we build, and now we pass the test, and now, well, we're still not good because our off, our up gamma seven is still depending on gamma six, which should be alpha six. So, so what's going on? So I'm doing snock string ops with gamma as the thing. Let's look at these. Oh, well, these are the ops. So the ops has a just gamma 7. So build snock string ops is actually not doing the work that I wanted to do. Um, so let's check it again. Build snock string ops. Should take the replica, R. And build this knock up with it. And the replica should be applied to the up. So what's going on? Ah, maybe my timestamp and my NDX env is doing something it shouldn't do with the the replica somehow. Uh, okay, let's um, let's also show. Well, no, we we do have Gamalopinsk. Gamalopinsk. That's NDX NDX env. And so when we take, oh, we don't even take that timestamp. But the previous one should be FS6. Hmm. Yes, yes, yes. There's something about append op here. We're appending an op that is in our prime. And we're just inserting T. Hey, one. Hey. Nice. 
you're full of energy from your routine. Oh, wow, two breaks. I might have. Yeah, what time is it? Oh, 6.30. Yeah. Not too bad. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yes, long break. That sounds good. Um, so what's new in, in the world? Oh, I wanted to ask you something. Um, It's connected to the Discord um, conversation. The um, you know there was this Discord that seems to be a kind of a um, um, well a, a group Discord for you know functional programming stuff, which seems all cool um, for people who might want to join in um, and then maybe have voice access if they join in through this um, through this um, discord instance but then i was also thinking hey why maybe it makes sense to also have a discord instance that's not you know in that group um, and um, where possibly there's voice chat but maybe for um, moderators um as opposed to just viewers or or followers um and then i thought well but the problem then is that there's two discord instances and that means if there's voice chat on both then how can can that does that even work is that part of a discord facility can you have can you sort of federate actually discord rooms or would i need to basically open you know two separate maybe one in with the desktop client and one with the web client and just figure it out with sort of a voice routing or audio routing within my computer right so okay so i guess i could have also a private room on the on that um on that more public discord Right, so maybe I should try that. Maybe I should try to create a public or a private room onto this declarative programming thing. But maybe I'll need some rights to do that since it's not my instance. Text instance, server boost, notification settings. Yeah, I don't think I can create a channel on that Discord. So maybe I would need to ask for the possibility to do that. Let's see, how can I invite you? Invite people. Share this link. And then I need to share that to you via a whisper, I guess. And there we go. I see you. No, no, it's not. It's um, it's this uh, declarative streaming community that created this shared Discord for 
many folks that stream um, with the, on, on the same type of programming languages. So because of that, I guess I don't have the capacity to create rooms. So I imagine I should ask the, the admin for this Discord to give me rights to create new rooms. I mean, one for my stream and then maybe private ones as well, right? Yep. Cool, cool. All right, so how am I going to do that? Um, I need to figure out who is the admin. I think it's Carol Optical. I, I, are there um, like uh, sub admin privileges which allow to operate within a sub thing okay well let, let me uh, let me get in touch with character and, and ask him um, that's done okay great great so I think uh, I think I will hear from Caroptical Caroptical at some point and uh, yeah that's cool also I de deactivated that um, Muxy overlay that I had added to to test things. Um, just realized that it was just adding some clutter to the page, and since I'm not even adding uh, using these things, it didn't make a lot of sense to have it. Um, it's quite interesting to. I'd be quite interested in actually, you know, de developing a uh, a Twitch overlay uh, using PureScript and some of these facilities. You know, one where actually you can click and then you can see my log, right? Or Actually, the, you know, the author of uh, the Chronofold thing, he's also working on a um, basically an improvement of Git that would work with the same principles, but be a sort of more, I guess, fluid is a way to, to think of it. He actually d does describe it in, uh, in this uh, here, Darwin, a ROM-based distributed uh, version control system with everything is a branch. And uh, yeah, that should be really cool. <laughs> yeah, I like to think so. Thanks for saying that. Okay, I think my uh, ten minute break is uh, coming to an end. So, so let's see. I was wondering about this dependency right here. It's really, this should be alpha six is really my issue. So let's, uh, I still do. A <laughs> I was, uh, I didn't fill my form, uh, my form properly, I think then. Uh, apologies, apologies. Okay, um, let's see.
Oh, okay. One minute left, you're saying. Um... Yeah, what what games uh, are in the kind of style of um, of RimWorld, or even maybe either more systemy? Um, and by that I mean where maybe you know it's not individual pawns that do resource collection that like maybe more in a city builder way or something like that like do you know any good ones do you like this kind of games yes yes i saw i saw frostpunk and that, that that did sound pretty cool i mean it looked it looks really gorgeous and um yeah i've seen i've seen a few youtuber play it um, I don't think there's any Twitch interaction things for it, is there? Twitch integration... So those are other games. I mean, does it have a frost pumpkin? No. Da -da -da. And I mean, also the another question is: Would you watch a me playing Rimworld? Is that something you would enjoy? I mean, if you've played it so much, uh, it might not be so interesting for you. I was thinking. <laughs> That's really sweet. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I, I saw that like uh yeah, <laughs> like uh, some are quite uh, ruthless like some youtubers i saw with like the, the whole carnivorous thing and right right yeah how how whether you're min maxing and not caring about uh, any of the sort of story aspects or whether you you care about it right yeah i i did think of that Want to see what people is this should be? Is that just the community site? Right, okay, it is. Uh, store page. Wanted to see what they recommend. Yeah, it is quite unique, isn't it? I've been wonder, I've been worrying a little bit about whether my um, about how well it's programmed and how well it would run on my old CPU. You know, like I have a more than ten year old CPU. I mean, I was able to play like uh, Paraspera, right? But it was very laggy at the end, and uh, yeah, that doesn't make for a great streaming experience. And I saw that people who presumably have more recent. Uh, CPUs, it was still getting a little bit laggy sometimes, but I guess I just need to try it, right? Where is the kind of game recommendation thing? Oh, right, I guess maybe looking at the tags. Wow, people think it's overwhelmingly positive. Like, that's really rare, right? A game that has such positive reviews. Right, and uh, royalty adds this um, these um, interactions with the uh, kings and like reputation points, right, with with your faction and things like that. And then 
your uh, your pawns want to have um, a throne room and things like that, right? Kind of fun. I don't know if I if I'd want that. More like this. Uh, there you go. So oxygen not included. Yeah, that was in my uh, watch list for a while. Yeah, factorial space haven. Huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. And this fortune arc. Oh yeah, I've seen some of that I think. Kingdom and Castle, False Punk. Foundation seem nice. Yeah, I think Rimworld's really unique, huh? Oh, there's a promotion. 10%. Oh, that's cool. And have you tried Paraspera, by the way? Is it just your kind of game? Go to do four gigabyte RAM. It's not super beefy specs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed it quite a bit, but uh, there's the, some bugs and something that are not super intuitive. Um, but the storyline was fun, and and I like that the, the graphics are gorgeous, and the whole system, like the game, looked pretty pretty good too. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna install this. Okay. So that was a bit of a longer break than usual. And that feels good. So let's get back to it now. So I'm advancing in how I'm... Um, um, yeah, cool. Uh, I'm advancing in the example. Now I'm off to dealing with gamma being added in the mix in the mix. And, and that allowed me to see some discrepancies, which my op gamma seven there should be linked to the op just before it, which should be alpha six, but it says gamma six, and that's what I've been troubleshooting. So let's go through the control flow again. And right, so we start by displaying Gamalok Pinsk. And Gamalok Pinsk seems to have all of the right things in it. It's called alpha pretty much everywhere except in the gamma six here, but that's kind of, should be okay. But presumably that's the gamma six that I end up having here. Whereas I would want to have this alpha six. And so let's, uh, let's see this. So when I'm appending, well, actually, Hmm. Right, 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 right. Oh. Hey, Chiroptical. Good to see you. My own channel, by that you mean my own... Uh, oh, a Discord channel. Let's check it out. Oh, let's see. Ah, text channel. Awesome, awesome. Let me take a look at it. I'm quite new to all this, so let's see. Direct message. And okay, yes, I see it. Excellent. So that's that's great. And then do you have experience with um let me check things there? Yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome one. A sub channel, but I don't know fully how that works. 
Yeah, excellent. Yeah, so uh, one was helping me through figuring these uh, Discord things out. And basically the end goal or the idea would be that, you know, folks that are, um, you know, regular viewers or, or moderators in my, uh, in my uh, stream, that maybe I could have, you know, a before stream or after stream, you know, powwow where, um, where it's kind of private to, to some folks, even though, you know, most of the rest is just open source. Um, so that, that's the idea. And I think uh, one knows, at least I know that one knows more about Discord things than I do. So um, yeah, that'd be awesome. Awesome. Great, great. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know what that is one, but that sounds great. <laughs> Um, appreciate it, Caroticle, and it's really cool that you have the this declarative programming Discord instance, and um, really awesome. Okay, so yeah, I think basically the snock up, I think I get it. It's just that it's not um, avoid private stuff for the entire Discord, right? Yeah, if you want it for your channel, we can get it set up. Yeah, I think that would be the most natural thing. You know, I definitely want to hang out on your your Discord for because I think it is in the spirit of what you're trying to do to kind of get people to know about each other and and that's a great idea. Um, but then I thought, hey, it'd be nice to also have this kind of private section. So yeah, that's awesome. I really appreciate it you setting it up for us. Um, Yeah, yeah, totally is a, a community. And uh, since, you know, um, it's not going to be as big as uh, other maybe programming communities or, or gaming communities, then it does make sense to to pull resources a bit together to give each other visibility. I think it's a great idea. OK, so I think I know where my uh, error is. The errors of my ways. It is that I need to to go into the, the um, how is it called? The NDX env array, I think, which is this guy. And I need to pick the last things from it when I'm snogging onto, onto things. Sounds good, Caratical. We can figure that out some other some other time. And yeah, if you guys want to work something else, uh, something out, then that'd be awesome. Enjoy your stream, Caratical. I'll. Um, I mean, there's there's three viewers here, so I'll just uh, raid you when uh, when I'm done. I don't know if I can raid actually. No, I, I think I can raid. Yeah. So that's NDX and oops, uh, whoopsie, whoopsie. That's NDX env. And, and we need to do a little bit of something to it, which is that, well, we need to do a kind of a maybe monad move, don't we? Can we always build an op? Yeah, we can always build an op. So, we can case something here. So let's see. Can do uh, let. Um, we want to uncons, I believe, or no, unsnock. Let's uh, check this. Check this out. Uh, just get the arrays. No, that's, that's a string. Arrays. So yeah, we're doing uncons. No, unsnock. Unsnock. Here it is. Yes. And then um, <clears throat> that gives us, oh, so we do need to case on that. So we case and snark and DFX off. And then we have J 
just um, in it and uh, last and we don't care about in it I think um, and what if we have nothing then we returned oh right we return so that's the case for the first oh well no actually if there's nothing it means it means the root I think that's what it means But then what does the up oh so it's the nothing oh yeah 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 then uh, then this is nothing yeah of course so we say up uh, times temp uh, red prime i plus one and then nothing val and then when it's just then then really it's just last that's what it is i believe just last and that compiles test pass hey hey and Gamma 7 depends on alpha 6 now, which is what we wanted. Very good, very good. And so let's carry forward. So now our gamma log Minsk is actually equals to Pinsk, which is strange i think i should rename this this should be gamma log pins like this oops this key and that should equal pins okay well that's just a alpha renaming we build we check we're happy so now what do we do we say that we're appending onto gamma log so we're creating a gamma log and now we can call it maybe um i'd like to call it alpha 6 gamma 14 uh yeah gamma 14 beta 8 Hey, let, let's do it this alpha 6 gamma 14 beta 8 and so this is really alpha 6 gamma 14 right there kind of want to see that by the way and is it yeah, it should be Pinsk. And then, yeah, I do want to take a look at that. Um, oh, right. So, we don't need that. Okay, oh yeah, okay, we're at gamma 14. And then we have um, all these previous things. We have our backspace. We have alpha 6 depending on 5, gamma 7 depending on 6, gamma 8 depending on 7, all of this thing in the right order. We have alpha 6, gamma 7 until gamma 14. So this is all looking great. Um, gamma 7 and then our linked list is what well our linked list is straight which is how it should be so we are we are all really happy uh, and 
we can um, now do what we can we will just want to append ops sort of at the end right well to be truthful it's not really at the end So there's something I'm not doing correctly in the API, I think. Which is that the op should contain its ref, but it does, right? The op should contain its ref. Double check this. I mean, yeah, of course. A timestamp and the ref. So when I'm when am I doing beta seven here? It's because I'm building, it's the way that I'm building the ops that maybe is... Oh, okay, okay. So I, I am actually going to rename those things for this example. Um, so this will be alpha, alpha 6. This is alpha ops alpha six and okay maybe we'll keep that name but the log will be alpha six. We add the pins ops to it and it's alpha six uh, and then beta log becomes alpha six at this point and then after we insert the beta ops then it becomes alpha six beta eight. And let's double and the uh, beta log and this is beta log alpha six right here. And then I kind of want to see those beta log alpha six. And let's uh, remove this guy and let's show also alpha log alpha six and beta log alpha six and beta log alpha six beta eight. There's still a bit of Pinsk uh, floating around. It's here, and we can fix that. And we can see things a bit better. And does this uh, compile? It does. And so we have alpha 6 here. We have beta. This is called beta 6, but it's still pretty much exactly the same until alpha 6. And then beta 8 is all of these things. Alpha blah. Ah, alpha 7, alpha 8. That's not right. Um, oh, how come? Beta ops backspace, backspace m. Beta insertion timestamp. Oh, because I'm using the causal string ops now, but hmm. let's check again on the beta insertion timestamp there. Uh, 
map of no it's alpha 2 and that just means that uh, alpha 7 depends on alpha 2 except this should be beta 7 so I thought it fixed that but visibly not everywhere and that's great to know So how did I fix that earlier? I said that I needed to use... Oh no, it was a slightly different problem, wasn't it? I wanted to... That's actually correct. I'm linking... I'm linking to the right... Um, to the right spot. It's just the, the timestamp that's not right right now. Timestamp should be better. And uh, because I'm adding a timestamp that should be in beta here, even when I do it with the causal string thingy. And so R should build knock up with R, which I'm passing here. So, because I am doing build causal string ops, aren't I? I'm doing build. Okay, let's check what the build causal strip uh, string ops look like as well. Control C, and here we go. And before alpha 2, we have. Okay, yeah, we do have an alpha 7 op it's being created by by this build cause all string ops and that's not right it should be using the beta insertion timestamp oh okay let's double check oh no well, well oh no the beta insertion timestamp that's the beta insertion ref shouldn't be the timestamp I'm getting confused here so let's see okay yeah I thought this was uh, very indented indeed Seems better. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what do we have? Yeah, we confuse about the beta insertion timestamp. Since we're building, uh, yes, yes, of course. I call this a timestamp, and that's where I get confused. So I actually do need to pass on a replica of the replica of the of the log that we're inserting in, and all this will be in a state monad later. But here we're having everything explicit and um yeah we need the replica because the timestamp is the ref it's not the it's not the actual timestamp yep that's it so build causal string ops is going to take now a replica like its neighbor and that's going to be R here. And um, and 
yes, this is a timestamp, but maybe I should call it ref. And then call it ref here. And I'm, ah, right, because I'm building the causal op with this, and that's a ref. And I'm going to call it ref here, and that's exactly where it should be. It should be going to the ref here. And so, in fact, we shouldn't be using... Right, right, so we also need a replica here. There's no no avoiding that. And so that's going to be R. And the R is R here. And... Uh, oh, you know what, actually? Does it matter? We could be writing this into someone else's log? Does this make sense? Or are we always writing in our log? And therefore I actually can use the the rep here. I think I I think I can. So it was just this confusion with the with the ref here I think. Just ref and then and then we say no replica. Okay, I might want to keep that code before I start changing it around completely again. And so here we're saying, yeah, no, we the up that we build, build it with the rep coming from. this guy from the log that we're pending into oh right yeah so in fact that's a synonym to say that built snark up doesn't use the replica anymore because we know that we're always appending build an up on the local log is what maybe is missing Local log appending coin point end of the weave. Okay, and so then we don't have a rep prime and we're just saying rep here again. And I should probably have saved this thing again, but let's not. And then rep, that looks good. That looks good. That doesn't need to be passed that thing anymore. Neither does this. And neither does this. And we're missing a CH now. Oh. oh. That goes a little, uh, we need a, we do need a timestamp though. Oh, right, right, right. Well, it's a timestamp, but it's a, it's the ref, really. That's, that's the one. And do we need the R and the I? We don't. So, let's not have it. And this seems to build. And of course, our test now needs some love again but it's the kind of love that's good in programming it's the one where you remove things we're appending this onto the alpha log so it should know who it is and this sounds wonderful and same thing for beta here and for alpha here And let's call this let's leave it like that for now. Remove alpha. And uh, remove gamma. That means yeah, we seem good. Does this compile? 
Oh, do I actually remove gamma? A build, a test pass, and we have a beta 7 going on just alpha 2, which is where we want it. So now our beta 8 correctly has alpha 1, alpha blah blah, beta 7, beta 8, and yeah, that looks all lovely, including beta 7 pointing to alpha 2 right here. Wonderful. So let's continue forward. So this is alpha log gamma 14, right? And this is just, let's not do it reverse. That's going to be confusing. Um, okay, beta log alpha 6 leads to beta log alpha 6, beta 8. Mm -hmm. And then gamma log alpha 6, I believe, it will depend on alpha ops pink, and that's fine. And then gamma ops blah, that's also fine if we use the correct log and then we apply those ops to what would then become gamma log alpha 6 gamma 14 alpha 6 gamma 14 is this guy and so let's make sure that whoopsie gamma Alpha log gamma C, uh, the projection of gamma log alpha C is gamma 14 should equal pin skin. Let's just double check this. And what? Really? I don't have. Oh, right. Okay, builds. and everything passes that's awesome and so now we're saying what we're saying we're appending on to gamma log alpha 6 gamma 14 and what are we appending where well, we're appending the beta ops which will get us to the beta 8 state and that's where things become interesting because then what's going to happen to this thing to be honest i don't know because we don't have the emerging rules yet so let's try oh need a space here append ops i need it here yep Bounds and test build and what? Oh yeah, I want to also. I want to take a look at the projection. That's that's really what I want to do. And I can just uh, log it this one and it's project. It's uh, project of this guy. Oopsie. Project of this guy. And what? Oh, yeah, no, it's fine. Holy moly, it's Minsk. It, but I didn't even implement the. I didn't even implement the the merge algorithm. But it looks like it's correct already. that's <laughs> interesting i mean yeah yeah it just works holy moly okay well so i guess now the question the, the real question maybe is what happens when we have beta log alpha six beta eight and that we get it to the gamma 14 state 
which means that we instead we append the ops to beta alpha 6 blah and that we append these gamma ops and then what are you going to tell me about the beta log thingy if that's also Minsk, then what? <laughs> it is also Minsk. What? <laughs> I haven't implemented the... the merge algorithm. Why is this working? I guess because it's just applying both. I mean, yeah, of course we know it's applying both, but okay. Project. Just by following the linked list, it just works by itself. Okay, that's a good point to take a little break. I'm going to get some food on the way and uh, I'll be back after that.
And I'm back. Okay, so... Hmm. Thank you. Let's see. I was thinking a tangential thought about me being quizzed and, you know, uh, by this. And um, in a, a manga, you would have, uh, you know, question marks on top, of, on top of my head or, you know, some uh, maybe some crow flying over. <laughs> and uh, I kind of want these to be accessible with a button on my stream deck. Um, those would be sort of a stream emoji or something, no? Don't they exist? I mean, I'm sure I could whip something up from the stream labs. Yeah, I guess, right? The stream labs have sort of embedded emote thingies in it. Oh, really? That's cool. I mean, there's emotes like there's the 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 chat new chat emoticons, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, there's there's chat emoticons or emotes, and then there's things. What I'm thinking of are things that would actually show uh, as an overlay on the on the video. An actual video overlay. But, um, right? Yeah, it, it seems like that would be a natural thing, right? Um, maybe that would be in the in my stream deck uh, menu. Yes, absolutely add it to the log. And I would even call this stream OGs. Yep. And the, the 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 triple question mark one should be a, should be the beginning. Um, this is my this is the um, the interface to my stream deck. As to the list and do it already streaming promise. Yeah, totally. That's a great idea. Um, that is a great idea. I mean, sometimes I will maybe come back after dinner and do stream improvement things that has happened in the past. Um, but maybe having a having a set time for it would be nice too. Yeah, right. But you know, that one doesn't uh, prevent the other from happening. So you know what? I'll just uh, I'll actually add. Yeah, I, actually, I could add something to my. Um, to my stream, which is uh, to my housekeeping log, which is that I uh, actually added a schedule on Twitch. And I'll check that. And so now we're saying, oh, I think I can do this right away. I can go into channel and schedules and say, hey, every Saturday, uh, let's say, what time would it stream? I think maybe. Hmm. If I did gaming, then what would be a good time for gaming? I guess starting at five again it seems like that's a good idea for gaming. So maybe like four and do an hour of stream things. Stream things. Sorry, I'm doing this off screen. Let's do this on screen. Stream things, and I would also be in science and technology, I suppose, for for one hour every Saturday. And I'll add another. I'll say game. And you know what? We'll kind of commit to at least giving that a shot from five for at least a couple of hours every Saturday. And to be I think I would probably do some, I mean, maybe I should rest on Sunday, right? Even, uh, 
well-known... Oh, you know what happened there? Everything disappeared for some reason. That's a strange thing. Um, please reappear. Okay. And... Yeah, that seems to be, to be fine. And I need this to be here. Oh, I see, I see. That's what's going on. Um, oh, well, that's very inconvenient. So, do this and that. And this. Okay. And uh, did I log things properly? I did a schedule on Switch. Hey, you know what? We can even congratulate ourselves for adding a um, streaming things session and a game gaming session. I mean, who am I kidding? I'm going to become addicted and to RimWorld and I'm going to be playing it all the time, huh? But that's why I've only, uh, you know, made the schedule two hours for everything. And then if I do two hours of Chrono Fold in pure script and then, you know, feel like withdrawal, RimWorld withdrawal syndromes, then I'll just jump into that. Okay. So... I was quizzed and uh, I had uh, crows flying over my head and uh, and question marks popping up out of thin air because this was working and I wasn't expecting it to work. I need my chat back on my screen. And here I go. Yeah. Good, good. Glad you prove. Okay, so our projection thing seems to just work, even in the case where arguably maybe it shouldn't work, but. But maybe in fact it should work, I don't know. Is a, this is an interesting state of affairs. Gamma concurrently corrects to Pinsk. All converge to Minsk. Despite the order of ops being different. Yeah. It does. That is a really interesting state of affairs. <laughs> I mean, let's look at our logs. Um, let's look at both logs. So, we have Gamma 16, which contains Alpha up to 6, and then Gamma up to 14, and then Beta 7, Beta 8 at the end. Whereas our other friend does Beta 7, Beta 8 first, and then all of the Gamma things. So maybe this means that I'm actually doing too much work in my projection by following the weave. I don't know. Or maybe it just means that that's just how it's intended and I'm following the weave. But then... Okay, let's look at the what the algorithm should be here. Once a process receives an op, a 
append the entry to the clone of all. Next, it has to find the op's position in the weave and relink the linked list to include the new op at that position. That we do. It locates the new op's CT parent. And insert the op after its parent. Unless it finds preemptive CT siblings at that location. Let's see if we can detect preemptive CT siblings. Um, when would we do that? Arguably when we append to the log. It wouldn't necessarily be a job for the projection. It would be a job for the appending. When we're appending something, we're appending an op. Um, we're appending an op that has the same CT parent. So uh, let's see. Um, in our case, we are appending beta 7 onto. <clears throat> let's focus on just one thing. So we are, let's say we are gamma log alpha 16 blah. And that we want to check out this guy as well as before. And I want to check out the. Uh, the the beta ops that I'm appending to it as well. No. And here we go. And I don't need to print this either. So show me those three things. So we have our gamma log gamma 14. And we're appending beta 7 to it. Very good. And it tells us beta 7 has a ref of alpha 2. And then that should tell us, hey, um, we have a preemptive CT sibling at that location. So indeed, that should happen at the append thing. So this op would have an O ref that point to somewhere that exists. So RF prime would be our timestamp. And basically we're saying what? Here we're saying if it ends with the thing. And so that's just the logic for inserting, um, inserting at the end. And then that's the logic for inserting not at the end. But that's still not we're not, uh, that's still not the case that we care about right now. Um, I could probably rewrite a lot of that upper stuff in the maybe monad as well. But uh, what are we saying? When I, when I, I'm supposed to add that beta 7 and it tells me insert it not at the end. It could still be at the end, and uh, um, and it would still matter um, even if this was, let's say, alpha six. So we were appending just right at the end. Then, if we had something else that had alpha six as a parent, we would still have a preemptive CT sibling. So we could say that, in fact, we'll sort of wrap things from here by doing the check so um this would be what this is um are we appending at the end but first we need to check is there a ct sibling so what is there a CT sibling? Then it's something else that would have a alpha two thing somewhere. Where where is that somewhere? 
I believe. So alpha, we're inserting beta 7. And beta 7, okay, beta 7. Um, Right, beta 7 is mapped to just alpha 2 here. Oh, so we need a reverse index of that. And this is our ref, right? Yeah, that's our ref map. And we need a reverse ref map to find the parent. Can we find this also with the link list? Isn't the link list sufficient? Um, I think from here we're kind of saying maybe, maybe it is. Ends in infinity. Um, and the ref for this is eight, which is this. And the next for the 13 is this. So yeah, this seems like maybe Oh, is this a case where this is next? And then Yeah, and then ref is the reverse of next. So maybe it shouldn't be written as a map. Maybe it should be written as an array. And then what I and then we deal with the case of trying to insert and we, we need to reverse the map, I think. Such that if the key is nothing, we get alpha one, which means that that, that that would be the parent map instead of the ref map. And maybe we need both. I think a bunch of stuff might be redundant in here. So maybe we detect that when we ins insert the ref. Because here I'm thinking of relinking, but and that that concerns concerns the next, and does the is the next are we deducing the next from the ref that's being passed in the op? So when we're being passed, I depend on alpha two. We do these lookups in the index to do our swapping magic. So maybe this should be when we're building the new ref that we should be thinking about things. Right now we only we're adding what onto ref? We're adding we're just adding at key T, we're adding a ref. And indeed, that's not going to tell us that we have a, a duplicate because the key T is going to be unique and we are happy with that. I don't even use ref in my projection. <laughs> because the link list seems to be enough for that. I mean, right now I'm trying to fix a, a, a text that is not broken. <laughs> so I think I should first find a text that's a test that is broken before I start adding things in here.
and it could be that it's just that my relinking the way that I relink the the next array is actually equivalent to to a CT merge algorithm because I use the ref to do the relinking. So let, let's let's think about this again. If we're at the end, then before the end, we add, hey, is that correct? Seems a little bit weird. Oh no, next is 16 and after 3 is 4. Yeah, no, it's... It's just fine. But in theory, it shouldn't be fine. That's the... so it is. It must be in this code that I'm actually somehow solving the problem in a different way. <laughs> Maybe I stumbled into a, another CRDT by mistake. That'll be fun. Um, so here at gamma 14, at index 3, we the next thing is four. Okay, I need to look at this again. At gamma 14, after three is four. Oh, but this example is not an example where there's the same CT parent. That's the that's what's going on. Oh I think so, right? The CT parent of beta seven is alpha two. I think that's although that's listed as next, not as ref. So but that's really what we're saying here, that beta 7 CT parent is alpha 2, whereas gamma 7 CT parent is just alpha 6. It's only if we deleted P that we have a conflict. Yes, okay. So, okay, okay, I think I've, I've, I get it. This is not an example of a CT parent conflict, so I need to come up with one. Okay, so it checks replication uh, with uh, three replicas and no conflicts. That's what I've done here. Okay, and so really the test is um, the test is that um, in gamma log blah and beta log blah are equal to each other and that means it converges and then maybe we want to say that it's also equal to um, Minsk, right? And could I match like with string? Mm. Oh, project. Builds and tests. Passes tests. With. 
yeah, with Rubricane no conflict. Okay, so that's the no conflict uh, case, and I didn't even realize that it was. And so indeed, in fact, the conflict case isn't. Uh, oopsie, oopsie, I didn't want to do that. Um, isn't oh, oh, isn't this the conflict case then with the mm. I don't even know if we have a conflict here. Well, let's give it a shot. So that's the example from here. And now this guy is called one, two, and three. And we have a one up root with the root like this. And then we have um, one ups um, CMD in which we put CMD. And our one log, let's call it CM maybe three, because it's three here. Mm, yeah, let's call it CMD, it's fine. Is um, this, I believe. And then, um, and then two log root will be empty log of two with the one up root. More than that, we're going to pass it the one ups. And then that's going to give us a two log CMD. And we rinse and repeat for three. And that's from here, but it's also doing this thing. Okay. Then side two just depends. Um, right, so um, two ops DEL equals build snog string ops into two log cmd of del that's at the end we're happy with that and so two ops del just takes our two log cmd and adds the two ops del to it and in the meantime, three ups says no out. And so we do out and we append those things to the three log CMD. And we don't need these parentheses. means we don't need them high up there either. Or here. Okay. And then in the meantime, 
that would be three three log well actually it'd be three log cmd out to be to be complete and this is two log cmd del okay so we have our site two with its cmd del and we have site three with its cmd out so now we say that one log cmd I mean, actually, one log is going to become CTRL. How is it going to do that? It's going to have a one ops uh, backspace foot times two TRL, and that's going to be something similar to our backspace uh, thingy from with the whole power blah which is here and so we can do it like that and that's going to be something where we just do it twice and we add trl and we call this append ops and we say we append the ops onto oh gamma log alpha not at all onto one log cmd And we add this crazy ops to it, and we should have TRL. So that's the basics. And so now we should be able to say that project of uh, two log CMD del should be called CMD del. Project of three log CMD alt should equal CMD alt and project of one log CTRL should equal CTRL. And that shouldn't be very controversial. Unknown value alpha, okay. An alpha going around here, yeah. That's empty log one. And we have uh, some stuff floating around here that don't need to. And it builds and it passes test. So we have what we want to have. But now the magic is to say, well, how about we apply we would like to have control alt del. And is that gonna happen? Well, that'd be, I'd be quite surprised. So for, to do that, we need to take, we need to append logs on our one log and put, put the, the first, the ops from two. Well, really we can append the ops I mean, if we can append those arrays, then we should be able to append these ops. And that's the other op. And now, if you're telling me that project of one lock control at Dell is actually equal to control at Dell, then I'm a little bit surprised. But I guess maybe I should do the other one because maybe this one, I mean, if the if the three of them are are working, then then I'm I'm very and then I have uh, at least six exclamation marks uh, or question marks on top of my head and maybe a murder of crows flying by. So let's see. We are appending um, now. We are appending ops onto the two log CMD del. And um, we're kind of appending in whatever order we see fit. We, we're going to append the, the one up backspace to TRL. And in fact, we should check that all of these things commute. So we should try the, the different 
different order, but maybe we could do that with quick check later. But um, even if this works, this is just very astonishing. And so we're doing three, and this is command alt, right? Mm -hmm. And in command alt, we're actually putting two ups del there. And and let's do two ups del first, just to mix things a bit, even though that's arbitrary. And then if this is also control alt del, and this is also control alt del, then I don't know, I'll do a little dance or something. Ah, okay. Whew. <laughs> I mean, not that I don't like to do a little dance, but okay, this is this is what I was expecting. But maybe it's because is it only one of them that's failing? This is really impressive. And this is the one that's failing. So you're saying that this one, these two are not failing. No, they are failing too. Okay, good, good. And how about this one? Okay, and this one fails too. Okay, okay. Ah, I, I'm glad we have a failing test for conflicts, and uh, even three for the price of one. And um, are we happy with that? And then we can uh, sort of show some stuff that we know where we're heading. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think we can show them here. And uh, we're going to show the projections. Sure. We can show the projections. But we we'll probably want to also show the um, the logs. But uh, this is a good start. Okay, that's right. So those are the three results. Ah, oh, that's great. So I think I'll. Uh, I'll start winding, winding things uh, down, and actually maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll prepare. Oh well, my food's coming as well, and so I'll get that, and then we'll uh, raid uh, Caroptical. Be right back.
All right, and I'm back um, for just a second. So just so that we raid Caroptical. So I'll uh, click the start raid thing. Um, two viewers are ready to raid in six, five <laughs> raid, yay. And uh, what's gonna happen? I probably need to check something, no? Like uh, car opticals channel. We haven't seen this before. It can be a bit surprising. Have we seen this before? Raiders! Hey Raiders! How's the rest of your stream? I was super distracted while I was watching, making sure I got your stuff set up. So, we're learning about optics, uh, specifically learning about how to use optics with basically the keyboard program. Uh, we've got some failing tests, but next time, nice, good. Oh right, yeah, you're you're building that um, that structure I didn't understand. I'm not I'm not under I'm not remembering what it's called. Thermal fold or something? Some kind of keyboard structure. Actually, something I meant to look up after your stream last time because I don't remember what that stands for. Something data type, obviously. The first is data type. Some deriving those. I believe that's the rest that you have in the menu. I might be wrong. Show instances. Okay, so right. So users here is slash and then wait, isn't this plural? Okay. Alright, 
Philippians. So, actually, what we should do is do. How do we do new type dividing again? New type dividing. Yeah, we should do that. use these instances to split or from to split them. I think that's the best way. Obviously we can't do that for the other cases, but I think this split works pretty well. Okay, so oscillation of transformation is one of change print user to uppercase T bits here and then we'll do a B of and then we'll run both of these so upper code yeah so A is printing the user so I guess we're just going to get Jenkins or something. Yeah, we are going to get Jenkins, I'm fairly sure. And then this for this one, we're going to get a password for the print user, I guess. So it should just be user and password. And then if we change this to like uh, derp, we should get stupid sorry uh, we, we would need to put username uh, Jenkins in here for this repair sorry I'm being being silly um, they were the same they matched in both places so not nothing has changed nothing has changed here um, so now we get nothing state within the state monad so obviously this is going to be view and this is going to be over or something um, let's just go with this small example where the state name is action I can fill a task array with or fill it with a set of the rules
定を見せるなっていう画面になってると思うんですよ。で、ちょうどいいところです。で、あれですね。この、こういう感じですね。この、ハイテンポンとか、このリビュー、インスタンスとか、このリバイスのハイテンポンとか、ピースとか、このリビュー、ハイテンポン、このバトン、So, there are different names for this. So, we have、uh, dot equals, dot equals, and dot equals. Yeah, that makes sense. Peace. It also does make sense because I'm not seeing those as equal. <laughs> so, it's a little bit more confusing. Then, scale, duration. So this is a setter for state, which is cool. And I guess that if you have a numeric type, you can put plus equals and times equals. And this should be, oh, right. This is, actually, this is being does this bother anyone? Well, it's a num, it has a num instance, so it's sort of the same. Nope. Zombies have a natural, natural massive penalty. But, well, maybe we are. So, this is like basically initializing the state of our kill with a total. And what's weird is that we don't have to do anything with sales or cash flows right now. So, I'm, I'm genuinely curious what. Okay, so we could, well, this isn't initializing state two. We're going to initialize state two later when we have a, a run thing. We're, this is saying, like, we're just going to, instead of even set the total to zero for a, when we run the sales operation again. Anyway. Um, yeah, exactly. So we'll, we'll initialize later. Yep. Thank you for reminding me, though. Hey, Conlon, how's it going? How are you? Super swell? Yeah, just learning about optics. So, how is shit? Okay, so、uh, anyway, I think that this is pretty cool that this is doing. This is just a stack operation.、Um, so, yep, that's cool. Okay, so almost all setter combinators. State equivalent, which simply replace the tilde with a equal. And that's what we did. Uber type, in case you're wondering. Tens squared to find the tenth. Okay, so. Where are we going next? I sort of wasn't expecting it this way, but whatever. Creating CLI tools with mixed scale values. Writing with JSON. Creating CLI tools with mixed scale values. Okay, that's cool.、Um, cool. We'll know what to put there. Yeah. Need to know what you're doing. Okay, sounds cool. Sounds like something I should be doing. So we've added two beers to our. Total, I guess, and now we're using plus equals. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, add over、uh, new for the new state. Great.、Um, ooh. Ooh. These are kind of weird. Print f. I thought it was.
it's going to be like, um, I thought it was this was just going to be like you, and that would be the sun, but. Is like you, but the moon is very bright, and then Jupiter, cool. Um, this is about is there any other way to use uh, the results that I get from you know, obviously, but there's probably also something for. So anyway, what time of day are we on? Do we have a thing on? Date is the oh lunar we can just like cut that thing but then we'll need to like drop more energy which can be drop more energy in this direction here and then um, that should give us basically this photo will be the thing and also the sun is at can just use the same photo We're keeping track of all this stuff. Okay. So this uses the stateful version of not timed over. This will give us a, a, a timed over really long sort of uh, side effect. I'm not sure. Historical artifacts is a good way to think about it. This uses a monoid 
the king of kings and the servant of all who fear and reverence. So we'll actually just leave this here because it's not going to play. And then we'll say, <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, take it easy. We're always learning. Everyone's learning. I did the backwards way. Oh, no, you didn't. 